So gold seems to be getting a little illiquid here. On the COMEX side of the market, on the LBMA, it looks okay. We haven't had nearly as strong a runoff. So perhaps uh, people would be going more to the London market for their deliveries. We'll see what happens. Hey everybody, this is your host, Rob Keynes at goldsilverpros.com. It recording this on December 18th, 2022, and this is your weekly market wrap-up. I want to dive right into what we saw happen during the week, and we're going to start with the gold and silver price. They were about even on the week. Gold ended in 1790s, silver just above 23. A slight decline over the week, but overall you could pretty much call it even and be just about correct. Major news came out in the economic data this week I really want to talk about. A lot of it has to do, I think, with confidence as a system, and I think now we're starting to see deflation show up and rear its ugly heads. You're starting off with the big number, which is uh, consumer inflation year over year came in at 7.1%. That's about two percentage points lower than where it had been the last couple of three months. I think last month we had a reading in the 8%. So it has been coming down for the last few months, and we warned that that can happen when we get to the deflationary stage of uh the inflation cycle, it goes in stages, usually three waves of high inflation followed by deflation. And we think that that's where we are right in the middle of it. So that went down. But in addition, uh, the import price index went down, which means the prices that we're paying for imports have gone down as well. So it's not just a deflation in prices here or productivity here in the US. We think we're also seeing that from across the pond as well. We did see a little bit of strength in the jobs numbers. Initial jobless claims are down to 211,000. Uh, on expectations of 232,000, so not bad, but all the manufacturing and the sales data does not look good. Retail sales down 0.6%, excluding motor vehicles still down 0.2%. So uh, automobile sales are really down. The rest of the economy is down as well. Empire State Manufacturing Index, that's the New York manufacturing, is down double digits, minus 11.2%. Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index down almost 14%. Both of those are much lower than what economic pundits expected. The industrial production index is down 0.2%, and the capacity utilization rate is down to 79.7. And that means our economy is not producing nearly what it's set up to. We have about 20% slack in the system. We have manufacturing crashing. We have home and auto sales crashing. <clears throat> and we have inflation coming down. We're in a full deflationary cycle, I do believe business inventories have ticked up 0.3%, something I showed on the program this week. I talked about business inventories also on the JM Bullion blog, where I talked about how we're ramping up inventories, even at a lower capacity utilization rate. We're not using 20% of our economy. That's the slack. We're still building inventories, which means the consumer has stopped buying and the businesses have stopped buying. The S&P U.S. Manufacturing PMI Index is down to 46.2. It's below expectations of 47.7. And the U.S. Services PMI, this is the Purchasing Manager Index, the feeling of Purchasing Manager Index of future growth, essentially, is at point, I'm sorry, is at 44.4, below expectations of 46.5. So the economic data did not look good at all uh, this past week in terms of growth of the economy. It looks like deflation has hit a square between the eyes, and we're going to see how long that goes for before we hit another inflationary cycle. Remember, this all goes in cycles. We're going to hit inflation, deflation three times, most likely before we get resolution in this recession. A building and housing starts come out next week. We also have some data on the gross domestic product. We'll pay attention to that. Along with the theme of productivity capacity utilization, <clears throat> was an article in CNBC. Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, tells workers that his new employees are facing lower productivity they just spent 32% more on their employees recently, and they're having to lay a lot of them off. And he thinks in this article, it's it's documenting how new employees, because they're not coming in the office and their remote work, are not integrating with the existing employees as much. And so their, uh, their tribal knowledge they build for the job is not building up. Therefore, they're not as effective. And this is starting to affect companies. And I do believe, one, the great quitting, two, also, the remote sales force is causing problems with productivity in America. We're going to have to see how America adjusts to that. Will there be new software that comes out? Will we do a hybrid scheme where people work part-time from home and part-time from the office? Will we become more virtual in, in the tools that we have? We'll have to see what happens. But right now, part of the pro productivity issue 
is remote work and the changing U.S. workforce. Also, a nice little article here from you <clears throat> from Zero Hedge, looking at the Global Innovation Index. This is from Visual Capitalist, and Dorothy Newville put this together. The U.S. is not the most innovative company. They are number two behind Switzerland. There is a rating based upon several categories, business sophistication, human and capital and research, institutions, infrastructure, market sophistication, knowledge and technology outputs and creative outputs. And based upon a measure of all those outputs, the U.S. comes in number two behind Switzerland, which comes in with the highest rankings. The highest ranking, Switzerland is 64.6. U.S. is at 61.8. Just 0.2 points ahead of Sweden is 61.6. The United States, however, is the highest in North America, second highest in the world, and much higher than competitors Russia and China. Russia is sitting at 34.3. China is at 55.3. Australia, 47.1. India, 38.6. Most African nations were in the teens with Namibia and Botswana ahead. Egypt is ahead as well in the low 20s. <clears throat> South Africa led the African continent, 29.8. Kenya at 22.8. Europe, the highest, again, uh, Sweden was 61.6. Germany at 57.2. France at 55. The UK at 59.7. Most innovation still coming from the Western world, although the Eastern world tends to be catching up just a little bit. There is the news for you this week. I want to get into the precious metal side of things. So we're going to start talking about the data that we see on the COMEX. And we're going to start off with gold. Here is the volume in OI. Of course, when you see low volume here ending up December, it means we have less trade. Most of the trade has moved to a future month. That month is February, as you can see by the contract data here. Not much trade going on in December, although people still take in deliveries. Another 351 physical deliveries came off the market. There are only 348 contracts left for December. So we don't expect to see too many more deliveries for the year. Maybe the last 348 will deliver or cash settle. 360,000 contracts traded on Friday for the February contact contract. And we're going to see what the settlements came in to look at the price. Up $12 on Friday's data, almost $13 to close at 1,820 cents on strong volume on Friday. We look back to Thursday, we were down $30. However, the worst day of the week on volume of 186,000 contracts. That's where gold ended. Let's look at silver again. Volume and open interest is down as interest in the December contract wanes as we get more towards the end of the year. Uh, not a lot of delivers to speak of. One contract delivered, only 1,113 left open. Not very many trades on December. The next big month for silver is in March. Gold is February. Silver is March. 108,000 contracts closed. There were exchanged for physical to the London market, 889. <clears throat> and no deliveries to speak of. That was Friday's data. If we go to Thursday's data, again, 108,000 contracts. Not super high. Just healthy trading to end up the year. Not any deliveries. Um, EFP over to London, 605. We're going to look at the Commitment and Treasures report through December 13, 2022. This is the data that made up what we see here in the trades last week because this is about ooh, five or six days old. Um, when we go down to, to silver, what we see is uh, the swap dealers have now gone net short. That's right. The bullion banks have now gone net short silver. They're now in more of a short position so I expect that that raise in silver price above 23 would kind of cool off just a little bit because the banks are net, almost net even, but slightly net short by about 800 contracts. The producer merchants are still long net short because they're protecting their downside price risk with some of the merchants protecting their upside price risk that having to buy silver in future months. The managed money is still predictably long on silver, expecting the price to go up and the other reportables being the wealthy family offices have added a lot of short positions, adding 1,700 this week and dropping 1,000 longs. I think they also believe the market is frothy. So the bullion banks and the smart individuals and family offices are going slightly short, which I think means the silver price is likely to cool off just a little bit here in the next week to two weeks. We'll see what economic data goes out, comes out that may change that. In gold, uh, not much as chain swap dealers are still massively net short. They added 11,470 more short contracts to 1,910 long, so more interest overall in the market, although more net short by 10,000 contracts. Predictably, the producer merchant category is still net short. The same reason net short silver is protect downside price risk. The managed money is almost double net long, not quite. 103,000 contracts to 66,000 contracts short. 
uh, added another 10,000 long contracts, managed money. The financial houses are definitely expecting gold to go long here on the flagging economic data. And I have to say, I don't disagree with them based upon the economic data we see and the deflation that we're seeing. Gold tends to do very well in deflationary environments. Managed money has apparently gotten that memo. Good for them. Other reportables are net long by factor of almost four to one. 120,000 long gold contracts to only 32,000 short. And they, I believe, are also smart money in the gold side. I wanted to look at gold in particular this week. We've talked a lot about silver being run off of the various uh, in, uh, exchanges and indices, including the Shanghai, the London LBMA, and the CME group and the COMEX here in the United States. Well, we haven't talked a lot about gold, but it's been run off a lot this year. Look at the runoff in gold in 2022. This is a massive amount of gold ounces coming off the market. And I want to do a share screen on the actual inventory stocks. We don't do this uh, too often, but I wanted to do it here. Here is a spreadsheet uh, directly from the CME group. And this is as of 12, 16, 2022. So the latest day that we have, that'd be Friday's data. And if you go down here to the bottom, the one number I have highlighted is that we only have in the liquid gold on the market, the liquid gold that is put up for delivery, for actual physical delivery in Cummings, we're down to under 12 million ounces. That's 11,715,000 ounces. That's not a lot. And an additional 11,508,000 ounces ineligible, but a lot of that's private contract and may not be eligible actually or may not be liquid enough for actual trade. This is getting to be a really low number in gold. We don't have a lot of gold on Comex. Could we get a run on gold before a run on silver? That would surprise me because of the way silver had been reacting, dating back to silver squeeze. It had been running off faster. We're now to 33 million ounces in total registered, although that number's actually come up some in the last four weeks. So we've actually had a net inflow, a slight inflow over the last four weeks into Comex for silver. And you have a healthy 297 million ounces combined. That's an additional 264 million ounces and eligible. We don't know how much of this is liquid because remember eligible is private storage and it could be private holders that don't want to sell it or they're using it for something else and it may not be liquid. We know that. So right now we just know that we have 33.6 million ounces of liquid silver, although that's healthier than the gold market, which is down under 12 million ounces we saw on that graphic. So gold seems to be getting a little illiquid here. On the COMEX side of the market, on the LBMA, it looks okay. We haven't had nearly a strong a runoff. So perhaps uh, people would be going more to the London market for their deliveries. We'll see what happens in the future, but it does look like a little bit of a gold run. Again, the data last week, economic data, is pointing to an economic deflation cycle. I have put up the chart many, many times that talks about how this goes in three, how we have inflation and how we have deflation. Um, I do believe that that will continue as time goes on, we will have a nice deflationary cycle. I think you're going to see demand destruction from the consumer. And I think we have too much supplies. So that supply destruction is going to have to start to occur. And that's going to lower capacity utilization in manufacturing. It's going to lay off manufacturing jobs. It'll lower shipping rates and amount of shipments. And that will affect the Chinese economy as well. In the manufacturing side, the economy across the world in both Germany and China, I expect those to be affected because the U.S. will be buying less. We continue to see where deflation takes us. And how the Fed in particular reacts. Have they tightened too much going in this deflationary part of the recessionary cycle? We think they probably have. And even reducing the latest rate hike to half of a percentage point or 50 basis points was probably not enough. They probably have over tightened. I suspect we'll see the effects of that coming in the next few weeks. That'll wrap up this weekly market wrap up, which we do every Sunday in the late afternoon or Monday in the early morning to get you started on your trading week. Of both Gold Silver Pros and jmbullion.com channels.